Hey everybody, it is Kevin Henry, the founder of the Dental Assistant Nation and host of the Dental Assistant Nation podcast, as well as editor-in-chief for drbycuspid.com. I am back again with Linda Harvey. Linda, how are you today? I'm great, Kevin. So glad to be back with you today. So um, this is going to be a tie-in to what we've talked about previously about the dental assistant's role in patient safety. Uh, And I want to make sure that you go back and check that out. If you're listening to this on podcast, it's episode 338 of the Dental Assistant Nation. If you're watching this on drbycuspid.com, well, you just saw what Linda and I talked about. So now this is going to be more of a QA. and a And Linda, one thing that I wanted to talk to you about is there are so many dental assistants who are coming in, they are brand new, they're trying to figure out their way. Is there a preferred way to make sure that they get the right patient safety training? Is it from a consultant? Is it from that other dental assistant that practice? What do you recommend? Well, Kevin, that's a good question because patient safety is everybody's utmost, you know, important goal. And I think that with onboarding new team members, especially in dental assistants who have no dental assisting training, they usually get mentored for a few weeks or a month or so, hopefully by a more senior dental assistant who shows them the ropes of the office. And that's fine because you can't take that from anybody else. You know, consultant can't teach you, you know, how to sit your side what your doctor likes, perhaps. Unless they're focused in that level of consulting. So it's important that they get my onboarding piece. And I look at it as this multifactorial. And then the second piece would be make sure that you take additional training or ask your doctor or office manager for additional training in the areas that are important for your state. So, for example, if you're able to do expanded duties in your state, you know, then you want to go and take that particular course. In Florida, to take x-rays, you have to go take the radiographer's, you know, course and get that certificate, for example. And same thing in other states, you know, they might require CDA. So, it's the first thing I would say, Kevin, to our listeners today who are new to dentistry is learn what your state requires. And they can easily do that by going to the Dale, the Dale Assisting, you know, National Board, Danby um, website, because they have some great charts and then we can put the and show notes to them of that link. And they can go and look and find where where can we go learn about what the requirements are for my state so I can learn and see what do I need to learn to grow in. Because learning to, you know, do something by being trained by somebody else is fine to one degree, but really you miss a lot of the important aspects of learning from other folks with different experience. You know, you may work for the best doctor, best dental assistant, but you're learning one perspective. So it's good to come back and learn one perspectives. And I love that because one thing that I have heard from these, shall we say, more seasoned dental assistants is mm-hmm. that it takes time away from them to teach the new dental assistants. So I'm trying to figure out how we balance that knowledge that we know we have versus making sure those people don't burn out, but we get the right information. And I love you suggesting different ways to learn and different, you know, I'm Uh a big networker. I I think dental assistants need to learn from each other, but then we get into the whole online component as well. So it, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So with us, let's address that too. The online component is very important because it does network with peers. But somebody who's new in dentistry may not be able to decipher between something that's not quite stated properly. You know, the intent might have been proper, but it just wasn't worded correctly, for example. Or there may be a change that the individual that made the post was aware of. So I would kind of take that as one perspective and then benchmark it against what you're being told in your practice as well as, well as other resources, whether it's other podcasts, going to the Dale Danby website, I'm going to the State Dental Assisting Association or, and, you know, ADS, the Association for Dental Safety, of course. So there's multiple ways that they can promote that, but it's just a matter of first, how do they learn about it? Hopefully they'll learn about it through this podcast and other your things that you're doing, Kevin. But if they're not, we need to have those resources into the office. So that's what makes it important for consultants and seasoned dental assistants to be able to share this. Um, and I'd like to let's address the time factor that you just mentioned as well, Kevin. Yeah, I'll give you a quick example. We've had several offices locally that have hired some individuals with no dental experience. So then the seasoned person is busy training them, and that seasoned person may be our point of contact that we're trying to get in touch with via email about scheduling a visit or providing an update or seeking some feedback on something we share, and we're not getting any response. So, which is fine. We have to be patient at the local side. We can get in the car and drive over there. 
But you can imagine for those of us consultants that work with clients across the state, in different states, that doesn't work. You just can't get your car and drive over there to Denver, <laughs> where you are. So so that being said, you know, I think that, that comes back to the point that I want to make, and that is offices need to allow time. So somehow you have to be able to slow the schedule just slightly with a little bit of a little gap there. So this person is not overwhelmed, not working them through lunch so they, you know, because everybody's so far behind that they burn out in two weeks and then they leave. Because we, you and I both know that there's a quantifiable cost to staff turnover. Absolutely. And, and I love yeah. you bring up the scheduling point because I think that that's such an important piece. You know, we see, we see offices take days off for their CPR training. Uh, software like training, whatever it might be. OSHA training. OSHA training, absolutely, <laughs> which is so important. We know that, right? You know, yes. and, yeah. and maybe it's something that we, you know, dental practices take that step back as we head into 2025 and say, is our schedule really working for not just our production and everything else on the money side of things, not but also our team side of things and making sure that we're not running ragged in a new year? You know, that's such a good idea because let's not wait to the end of the fourth quarter to make those goals because we already know we're in August. The hygiene, well, close to August here, the hygiene schedule is already starting to, to fill up for January and soon February. So you won't be able to make much adjustment, you know, on schedules if you need to. Um, but I think that's an important thing to plan ahead for sure. So is it something that, uh, and, and I'm going to ask your opinion because you work with so many dental okay. practices. The Dell assistant may see some things that need to happen. Is it up to him or her to say, I've got an idea and really take that bold action to to try to bring up a point that maybe will help the entire practice in the new year? You know, that is an important step for someone new to take. One thing, let's talk about it from two perspectives, Kevin. One is the Dell assistant who comes to another practice who may not have much experience or at least doesn't know the ropes in your office. And they come and all they're saying is, well, in my last office, we did this. In my last office, we did that. We did this before. And after a few times, that wears thin and it gets grates on the nerves of your new team members. So kind of balancing a little bit. So let's just speak to that person for a minute. If you are new to your practice and you have some little experience and you're seeing things that need to be improved upon, prioritize them. Don't pick 10 items and try to change them and beat up everybody at once, even though you may not intend to beat up everybody, right? And maybe coming across like that. Yeah. So pick one or two items that are really critical. What are they? The ones where somebody's most likely to be in danger. Is it going to danger a patient? Um, is it going to cause harm to a team member when they're working a sterilization, for example, because the heavy utility gloves aren't there? And and then gently move through those. Because sometimes people get stuck in their ways and they don't want to change. Right? So the other thing, Kevin, is for a new team member who's coming in and has no dental experience, but now is exposed to some of these trainings, the podcasts we're doing, uh, they've taken a course on the Dale Danby website, or they've joined the Association for Dental Safety, and whatnot, and they learn some things there. So print out the resource that you find, take it back, talk about a team meeting, and just sort of say, hey, team, I'm having I'm having a great time learning here. I appreciate what you entrust me with, and I'd like to bring up a point for discussion. And when you have that valid approach, you, they really shouldn't say no. <laughs> well, and, and shouldn't, shouldn't, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. <laughs> you're right. Because, uh, you know, safety is such an important thing. And I love that you said that about oh, yeah. prioritizing safety. Because I think so often mm-hmm. we've thought about the money side of things and making sure that mm-hmm. we're getting those goals and everything else. But if, but if people are unsafe in the practice, including your patients, you know, all the money in the world doesn't matter at that point. No, and that likens to what my team and I have seen over the years and, and many of my consulting colleagues as well. If sometimes we go into a new practice and they are so far away from where they need to be, you can't move the needle in one visit. You know, we have to prioritize them and say, okay, they got this list of that, a very bad score on their mock inspection, you know, and you can't fix everything in a day. You can't elevate because people just can't handle that much change and they typically don't have time just while they're seeing patients. So we have to prioritize and move them forward. And it's a growth process over a couple of years sometimes to get our office really where they need to be. You know, you and I saw each other at the Florida Dental Association meeting back in June, which was yep. great. Yes. And and one thing that I saw so many team members do was that, you know, they were splitting up, taking different courses, and then they'd come back together to discuss what um, they learned. You know, 
and, and I love what you said a minute ago about if somebody's doing their own learning, but bringing that back mm-hmm. to the team and making sure that there's that safe space and time to actually share what they're learning. I think that's so important. That's a great point. I think that's a good idea. I mean, sometimes the divide and conquer works, you know, because they're taking more courses, they're maximizing their knowledge. And sometimes it may not work depending on the culture of the practice. Because when you think about the fact that they send only one person, who else is there to help substantiate what they saw? So I think they need to adopt what you said, come back to that safe space, say, you sent us all the different courses, doctor, so we can bring back multiple, you know, multiple information on different topics. Let's sift through it and keep that safe and keep that space safe. I think that's something to highly honor. So I, I've got to get your opinion on something because I've heard this okay. from so many dental professionals. They bring something back from a meeting. They bring something back from their learning and it goes nowhere. And, and their excitement about the learning gets snuffed out very quickly. How, how do these dental assistants help their doctor understand their passion for it and why they think it's important? So let's, let's bring in just one of our friends that we know from the Academy of Dental Management Consultants and the National Speakers Association, Catherine I tell about. Of course. She talks about that courageous conversation. So it's a matter of getting up, you know, your nerve, so to speak, and planning out what you're going to say. I just call it, you know, a clarification conversation. That's the word I've used over the years, you know, because you don't want to be in any confrontation. And so many times over, team members will kind of withdraw and they'll feel like they start beating themselves up internally. Nobody's going to listen to me. My opinion doesn't matter. My thoughts still count. Nobody's remotely wants to hear them. That's what they keep saying. But instead, turn it around and draw a bigger frame around the conversation. I attended this great course. I'm feeling like, you know, maybe because whatever reason they feel like this is not being listened to or it's not being appreciated. I really feel like I like to talk more about this. And just putting that out there and starting either with the doctor or the office manager and try to get that shift in the mindset changed or at least the atmosphere for the meeting. Does that help a little bit? Uh, absolutely. You know, and, and I think a lot of dental assistants are sitting out there right now. And, and Dennis, if you're listening to this, I know. I know a lot of you do, you know, you're sitting there right now and, and it's about every member of the team understanding that there may be a better way to do things than the way that they've always done them. And I think sometimes that's a, a shock to our system, but it's important for us to be open to ideas as well. It is a shock to the system because sometimes we sit there and say, I don't want to change, I don't want to change, I don't want to change. But how many dental assistants you, you know, have been in the profession before we had digital radiography? That was a change. You know, um, mm-hmm. Digital scanning, that was a change. I remember a time when um, you know, electronic records were becoming more phased in. And I'm like thinking about some of the hygienists, for example, because I'm a formal hygienist, and even dental assistants who didn't grow up in that world, didn't get trained on it in school, but now they have to do our new programs. And how to make yourself marketable and more relevant to the practice by staying up to date with that program, whether it's Dentrix, Siegel Cloth, Soft Dent, Perf, whoever, um, making sure that you're staying up to date. So the doctor's investing in other training for the team. So I think it's important that they invest in the safety training as well. And it doesn't have to cost an arm or a life, but it definitely needs to be relevant and applicable to their setting. So if you could wave that magic wand, Linda, and have everybody do yeah, something the right way at the end of 2024 and heading into 2025. What's that one thing that you see really missing from a lot of dental practices or something that oh, they gosh. need to be improving upon? Or is it one thing even? I hate to limit you to one. <laughs> I know. I'm going to say probably three things, Kevin, yeah. if that's okay. My top yeah. three things. One is personal safety. We see so many offices now, and I'm going to use the word backslide, if you will. They've gone back to their pre-pandemic way of wearing PPE. We know that the N95 respirator masks are the best source for protection against aerosols. But now that we know and understand more about COVID and, and not as many people are dying from it, you know, it's, that's kind of gone away, if you will. But I think offices and teams are forgetting that there's a lot of other respiratory, droplet transmitted, aerosol transmitted diseases that we should have been protecting ourselves against in a better fashion in the past. And we've forgotten that. So protect yourself, keep up with the PPE, make sure you're wearing the heavy utility gloves that you're supposed to wear, find a way to make it work. All it takes is one needle stick, one cut on a contaminated instrument, and you don't know truly know that patient's health history because they may not have been honest with the practice. Uh-huh. 
So that's number one thing. Okay. My, my first magic wand would be that. If I had three <laughs> wishes with my genie, okay, Kevin? That's a great idea. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to have my, here's my three wishes. My second wish would be in the area of sterilization. There's so many teenagers that do everything differently. They're not uh, properly pouching the instruments or wrapping them well. Uh, we've got some great um, slides that we've been putting up on our dental compliance website for what's wrong with this picture, okay? <laughs> you know, cassettes aren't wrapped properly, instruments are over, overstuffed. And they have too many asterisks. They're not. They're not used following the proper protocols for sterilization. And many times they don't even realize that they're taking instruments out before the cycle's finished because when the pop, the door of the enclave pops open, that's for the drawing cycle, you know. And they're not supposed to take them out because now the instruments are not sterile because that wet paper is like wicking material. It's sucking in any contaminants in the air. So that's my second wish to really to kind of focus on those steps that makes a difference. Love that. Um, and this and this comes back Kevin to what I what we I think we talked about in our first conversation is preventing medical errors in patient safety. Yeah. And the medical errors crisis goes back to 2000 when the Institute for Medicine blew the lid off of healthcare with a couple of papers. Um, one was called "To Errors Human," with the magnitude of medical errors happening in hospitals in this country that were re resulting in deaths of patients. Now, we don't have that kind of data available for us in dentistry, but we still know, as I said before, we're holding patients' lines in our hands and each time they sit in our chair. So looking at that and understanding how that serialization process works is extremely important. The third thing where there's tons of confusion from everybody coming at, pay, from coming at our teens from the sales reps, the manufacturers reps, this person, because also it's all these different facts, is telling you water lines. Mm -hmm. They're getting it mixed up, you know, they're saying, oh, well, my sales rep or my so-and-so person told me all I have to do is use distilled water. That's all I need to worry about. And they don't understand. So what reigns here, and this is the big takeaway, is the manufacturer's instructions for use. Knowing the manufacturer's instructions for use for the type of the chair that you have, whether it's an ADEC, Midmark, or any other brand, and knowing how to use the products that you're using in your water lines. Whether it's a straw, a tablet, or a drop, knowing how to use the product. Those are the big things. And that's where we pull in the manufacturer rep, the sales rep. Mm -hmm. we, we go to the Association for Dental Safety. We use all these different resources that are available to us mm -hmm. instead of guessing or asking people on Facebook what's best. Yeah, at Facebook. And, no, but don't go to Facebook all the <laughs> for that. But also even I, I've come across a few reps that really don't understand it because let's, let's face it, Kevin, in their world, they're experts in thousands of other products. Good. I could never do their job. I, I Kudos to them. You know, they have to know equipment, they have to know burrs, they have to know hygiene, they have to know all these other things. Of course, if they want to go deeper, they can contact their manufacturer's reps. So so be careful with some of, they may not be as up to date as they should be, even though they're trying. So that's why I say even better is looking at the manufacturer's instructions for use. So Linda, I know in the first part of our conversation, you mentioned BA <laughs> Connect, and I just want to make sure that yes. you get an opportunity to mention that again uh, we wrap up today, if that's all right. Thanks. I'm glad to. So with our Dental Compliance Institute, just now, Monday, a week from Monday, you know, beginning of August, we were launching our DA Connect membership section, specifically for dental assistants, for dental assistants, by dental assistants. We've got some of our great members who are adding uh, content there. T. Hunter, Shree Besby, and folks that people know in the industry. Sure. And I'm just really excited to support them with accurate, timely information in a lot of different areas with safety and compliance and workflow tips and what's wrong with this picture just to have some fun and really get some accurate, timely information. Well, and we're going to make sure to put all the information for Linda, for DA Connect, for the Dental Compliance Institute, the Compliance Divas, your podcast. Uh, that you That's do. right. We didn't. We can't, can't close out without mentioning the Compliance Divas. The absolutely. Divas. absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Listen, that website is thecompliancedivas.com, Kevin. So if anybody wants to check them out and not already listening as describing to our podcast. You know, and, and as I always tell people, I love that podcast because it's just very uh easy to listen to and we know often infection control and osha and compliance isn't 
and you and, and the amazing ladies who do the compliance divas make it so easy to listen to. So kudos to you all for, for boiling it down to its very essence. So thank you. We have to keep life simple. Everybody's looking for <laughs> simplicity and how to do things. We don't need to make it more complex. Hey, thank you. For that. Absolutely. Well, Hey, this has been kind of a two parter and we really appreciate it. Whether you're listening to us on Dental Assistant Nation, you're watching this on drbycuspid.com, but it's important Patient safety is always the priority in the practice. So, Linda, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I really do appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, Kevin. And thanks to all of you who listened to this podcast. Really a two-parter, like I said. So make sure you're going back on Dental Assistant Nation. If you're a dental assistant listening to us out there, there's all sorts of great resources for you there, as well as the Compliance Divas podcast. Until next time, it's Kevin Henry, the host of the Dental Assistant Nation and the Editor-in-Chief for Dr. Mike Cuspin, signing off and wishing you nothing but success ahead.